all of humanity began here on this continent, and we've slowly spread out to other parts of the world. You hear it said that a lot of people, when we come to Africa, we form an attachment with, with a continent that never leaves us. My personal theory is that it's a homecoming. For the last 40 years, AWF has been working in Africa. It is only in Africa where you find some of the unique species, some of the unique habitats, which will benefit the whole globe. It's about saving wildlife, it's about saving other species. Their existence means your existence. We have been going on since 1961, and what we've done can be seen. AWF's belief is that the countries, the governments, and the people of Africa should identify priority landscapes that really have rich wildlife resources. And, and that, in a nutshell, is what a heartland is. The heartland really works to link those uh, pieces that are important. Protected areas, community areas, uh, areas might maybe be owned by individuals, and you bring them all together into a working landscape. Heartlands are about land. Uh, it is about space. Once people understand our vision of the heartlands, the next thing they usually ask is, so how do you actually work in heartlands? The integrated approach that AWF takes really has four dimensions. The first is the conservation of large landscapes. The second is protecting individual species. The third aspect is conservation enterprise. The last dimension is capacity building within Africa. We have interventions related to land and habitat. The areas and the lands that have been put aside for wildlife conservation are grossly inadequate. So we're protecting national parks, setting up land trusts and acquiring more land for wildlife, identifying corridors, all the things that make sure that there is habitat for wildlife. These two national parks comprise about 5 to 10 percent of this entire ecosystem and the Manyara Ranch is sitting neatly in the middle of them here. And now the Manyara Ranch sitting in this corridor provided an ideal opportunity to secure a large section of land. And this whole process was facilitated by AWF in recognition of the conservation values the Manyara Ranch could secure over the long term. The second major way that we work in heartlands is by a focus on species. We need to understand what the species, what the requirements of those species are uh, within, within the landscape. We need to understand what are the activities that threaten uh, their well-being. There are, of course, a number of endangered species in Africa. The mountain gorillas are very threatened. Predators are being killed because of conflicts with humans and their livestock. If wildlife could talk, it would take us to court. You know, you're infringing on my space. You should know the resources that you're managing. And uh, you can't know unless you investigate. You need the scientific feedback to people who are managing on the ground. We have put radio collars that monitor movement of animals. Then we are able to sit down with our partners and say, look here, this is the time when we expect conflict to be at its highest. So we would suggest that you deploy your staff more during this time. If you had looked at mountain gorillas in 1989, I mean, you would have said this animal is doomed. But the mountain gorilla has really thrived, and there's a great future for those animals. The incredible decline on elephant numbers has been stopped and actually been reversed. 500 rhino, black rhino, is an increase since the year 2002. Talk about a comeback. Where we invest resources and where we use good science and when we undertake the right sorts of interventions, there is no reason why humanity cannot succeed at this task if we set ourselves to it.
The third major way in which we work is through conservation enterprise. If people don't benefit from wildlife, then why should they conserve? We realize and know that we, we really have to engage the African communities. You have to also show them what can you get out of it. Because people are hungry, people need to eat. Our aim is to empower communities to be able to take part, to take ownership you know, of the wildlife and the enterprises you know, that they can derive from there. We're interested in finding ways to make these landscapes economically viable. And we do that in a lot of cases by working with the private sector. And that could be anything from a lodge to a walking safari to a cultural tour. And AWF literally brings the parties around the table and say, what are your interests? Can we negotiate? This is the first Maasai women group to start something like an enterprise. In 2001, uh, AWF started training these women. And just after they finished, the women sold the products worth 560 US dollars. They started buy buying the, like shoes for their children. They were even looking more healthier. So it is really touching everybody in the village. The final way that we work is through training and capacity building. Historically, African Wildlife Foundation was about developing leadership. It was about building capacity of African nationals to manage their own resources. The Charlotte Fellowship is one way of trying to get people aware that they can take leadership in the management of wildlife on their lands. Yeah, the scholarship I obtained from the support from African Wildlife Foundation, it led me to obtain my master's degree in environment and development. I'm a Charlotte Fellow. I know about wildlife. I know wildlife is, is beneficial. But uh, my work does not involve me only. I work with so many people. The communities I work with, private sector, government, landowners and other people should see the effect of the lessons that I've learned. The Game Scouts have been trained to use uh, a GPS and to write down data in a structured format that can be then used to answer certain questions. So OWF have been working at the community level to help bring in the information we need to make the decisions as to how land should be used. You need that knowledge um, within and among the people of Africa who are in the long term going to be responsible for the management and for the conservation of their wildlife. There is a recognition from AWF that Africans have the capacity. I think it's important for me to work for an organization that is working in Africa, whose bulk of the staff are African. We can bring in our feelings, we can bring in our backgrounds, we can bring in the diversity of cultures to bear on conservation. I was raised in a wildlife area and I'm hoping to leave my kids in a wildlife area and thinking of all of a sudden that going away, something that I can't imagine. I like nature. So when I got this opportunity, to me it was a stage of completing oneself. I want to be different. I want to apply that to conservation and make a difference. I feel privileged to be involved in conservation. For me, conservation, nature conservation is something I have a passion for. I like it. <laughs> I love it and I think I'll stick to it. I'll not change my mind. Donors and supporters come out to visit and I love to show them firsthand the impact that we're having and they walk away saying, wow, I can't believe the staff. I can't believe the way partners are working with AWF. I can't believe how much is actually being done here on the ground. And, and I believe if you'd come out and see it yourself, you'd have the same reaction and you'd want to make the same investment.